Hey, hey, crafty friends. It's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press again. And today I'm playing with the cutest little mermaid fairy from Heartcraft Paper. I mean, look at her. Isn't she pretty? She's part of the new release that goes live today and we're celebra uh, celebrating with a blog hop. You'll find links below. Let me show you how I put this card together. I started by printing my digi stamp on a card stock and then coloring her with Copic markers. I generally use three shades for each area, but for larger areas like her tail, I'll use four to five colors and maybe only two colors for small areas like her eyes. I just want to be able to add some highlights and shadows. It gives the images the feel of depth and dimension. Guys, I'm not a coloring expert. I just play one on YouTube. <laughs> just kidding. I usually just cross my fingers and hope for the best. While I'm coloring here, let me tell you about this digi stamp. Like I said, she's part of the new release from Heartcraft Paper. She's called Aqua Pura Fae. She's one of several new fairy stamps, and they each come with their own little sentiments. They're all really cute, you guys. You should check them out at heartcraftpaper.com. And with every new release, Monica, the owner, issues a challenge. The theme this month is Anything Goes. You don't have to use Heartcraft images, but we don't mind if you do. Just upload your project and show us what you make. You could win digi stamps from the new release. Also be on the lookout. On January 5th, Heartcraft Paper and Sketch Saturday are teaming up for another fun challenge. Monica is sponsoring the event and she's got an adorable new digi stamp she's releasing just for it. I can't wait to show you what I made with it. Super cute. No sneak peeks though. You have to come back on the 5th. Uh, back to my coloring here. I was inspired by Pantone's new color of the year for 2019. It's called Living Coral. And coral is just one of my most favorite colors, so I'm really excited. I wanted to color her tail and wings and some lighter shades of it. You can also see me bring in some pinks and light reds on her tail for just a little more variation. All the colors end up working really well together. Originally, I had a different plan for this card, so you see another mermaid on the right. I'm not going to end up using her, but I don't realize it yet. She'll make a few more appearances in the video. Just ignore her. You ever do that? Do you start with uh, a plan in mind and then... It morphs as you go, or do you know exactly where you're going with your cards? I, I usually start with a plan, but I let it go. Um, after I finish coloring, I'm going to clean up the edges with a colorless blender. I'm going to use my scan and cut to cut out the images, so I want nice clean lines for it to follow. Man, I really love my scan and cut. I use it all the time. I like being able to cut out right along the lines. Comes out nice. And after I get them all cut out, I like to go around the edges with a black Sharpie. Gives you a nice finished look. I've already done the mermaid here, so I'm just doing the fish on camera for you. Next, I'm going to die cut an anchor from some silver metallic shimmer paper that was in my stash. The die is from Echo Park. It's a cute little anchor. My finished card is going to be A2 sized. So I've got a mat that I've cut down to be about 3 8 inch smaller from the top and the sides. And then I have a fish scale stencil from My Favorite Things. I'll use it to add a little bit of the Abandoned Coral Distress Oxide just to part of the mat. You see that other mermaid is now a blue circle. I'm pretty soon I'm going to decide I don't like the colors together and I'll, I'll dump that little one. There she goes. <laughs> um, I had some wire uh, mesh ribbon in my stash that I decided to use to mimic the anchor chain. Each strand is wired, so I just cut off one row and puff out the sides to look like chain links. You could just tie on a silver cord, but I had this and I think it works nicely. I'll twist it on and then I'm going to secure it with a little dab of glue and I'll just pinch it until it's dry. Then it's time to stamp out my sentiment. I'm going to use an alphabet set from Lawn Fawn to spell out Hooked on You. I thought it would make a cute little love note and Valentine's Day is just around the corner. I'm not going to lie to you guys, it's uh, kind of tricky to get this alphabet lined up. The backs want to stick to your fingers instead of the platform. But once I do, I'm going to stamp onto some acetate, just a test stamp, make sure it looks okay, and then I can slide my card underneath it and get the placement right. I'll remove the acetate and I'll stamp twice with Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. It's uh, generally my go-to black ink lately. I like it. Uh, to start assembling my card, I'm going to add foam tape to my little images. There's a single layer behind the fish and the anchor, but there's also a layer between the mermaid and the anchor. So I have to double up behind some parts of the mermaid just to make sure I've got even coverage along the back. And then peel off all those little bits of release paper. 
which I think takes just as long as applying the foam tape in the first place, <laughs> and then stick everything down to the card. And I can't forget to stick my little fish in place. To back um, the mat of the card, I'm going to use a thin layer of fun foam. It's in a pack from the dollar store, and it's about half the thickness of regular fun foam. You get a lot of sheets, so it's pretty inexpensive. I'll trim it down to fit, and then before I glue it down, I need to fold over that ribbon and tape it in place. And then I use PVA glue to adhere the, the mat down. And I put it in a fine line bottle so I get a nice light application and I don't end up oversaturating the paper. And then I'm going to glue the, uh, the mat to the card base itself. And remember, I trimmed it down a little bit, so I've got a nice little border around the edges. And then a nice acrylic block, a big heavy one. We'll hold it in place till it dries. And then to finish my card, I'm going to add some clear flat back sequins from Pretty Pink Posh. Say that three times fast. <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit of stickles to her crown. And then some Wink of Stella to her tail and her wings. Just gives her lots of sparkle. And then that's it. She's all ready. Got some close-ups so you can really see all of the shimmer. Isn't she pretty? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you like today's video, be sure to hit like, subscribe, and click the bell so you don't miss any new videos. And don't forget to enter the challenge for your choice or your chance to win. Thanks for watching.